Hello everyone, I'm Profi1322 and this video is going to show the fastest fully upgraded sports classics cars in terms of lap time. We're quickly going to go over the slowest vehicles right now and as always the position counter is in the top left with the best lap time the car achieved in the top right. This video only focuses on track performance so if you're interested in top speed where braking, cornering and acceleration aren't relevant, check the link in the description for the top speed testing series and if you want to have more information about this testing including the extent to which it's accurate and how useful it is for you personally, have a read of the full description as everything that you need is in there. So the Sports Classics class has I would say three distinct areas within it. This is the first one that we're seeing here with all the slowest vehicles. We had well, basically three tornadoes straight away. There's no difference between the cabrio version and the regular version of the tornado, but I just included them in as separate vehicles for uh, completion. The, obviously the mariachi tornado as well that we saw at the start, that is actually exactly the same as a regular tornado as well. It just isn't, you're not able to upgrade it or anything like that, so it doesn't get the benefit of the turbo, the engine, the transmission, all that kind of stuff. And we've also got the peyote, the tornado custom, which does get a bit of a better lap time when you do upgrade the tornado at Benny's you do improve its lap time a little bit because it does get a little bit better stats but it's still not that great and then in 15th place here we've got the manana very similar to the peyote and the tornado you know it's all these very slow types of vehicles and really they would do very well if they just if, if Rockstar took all of these vehicles, put them together with quite a few of the slower vehicles that we saw in the muscle cars class in the video that we saw last week, and put them as a low riders class or something like that, at least it would make them interesting, but now because they're so slow and so far off the pace, they're pretty much useless. Now we've got sort of the second group starting with the Tornado Rat Rod and that actually makes five tornadoes in the bottom seven. Um, but the Tornado Rat Rod with its 118 isn't anything special. And then just ahead of it in 13th place we've got the Roosevelt with a 117.3 so a little bit quicker but yeah this sort of middle group of four vehicles with the, the Tornado Rat Rod, the Roosevelt and the two vehicles that we're about to see are kind of in no man's land in this class you know that they're they're certainly nowhere near as slow as the vehicles that we saw at the start, but they're also still way off the pace of the vehicles that we'll see in the top 10. The Frankensteiner here with a 116.9, just a little bit quicker than the Roosevelt, and just ahead of the Frankensteiner in 11th place, we're going to have another Roosevelt with the Roosevelt Valor. The only difference between the two Roosevelts is that the Roosevelt Valor gets the benefit of having a rear tyre on the back which increases its traction just like a spoiler. Obviously in, in, adding, adding spoilers to cars on Los Santos Customs improves their traction, improves their cornering speeds and decreases their lap time. The Roosevelt and the Roosevelt Valor are exactly the same under the hood apart from that small difference which allows the Roosevelt Valor to corner at higher speeds and get a slightly better lap time. So coming into the top 10 now, starting with the Stinger. Stinger is a very nice vehicle to drive, the same with the next vehicle that we're about to see which you can probably guess what it is. A 113.2 isn't too bad, you know, it's a relatively competitive time and it's the start of sort of from 10th place maybe all the way to 4th place where we've got a significant group of vehicles that are all relatively close on pace and, and relatively well balanced. So the Stinger GT is just ahead of the Stinger in ninth place. They're pretty much exactly the same, the, the two Stingers under the hood. It's just that there's a few small uh, suspension differences with the Stinger GT that changes its lap time a little bit, but it's it's barely noticeable. Uh, and it's obviously that the lap time difference of three tenths of a second is, is, isn't that much at all. But uh, both very, very nice vehicles to drive, uh, the Stinger GT especially in my opinion. Now in 8th place we've got the Mamba, a very, very small vehicle and it can get a decent lap time. It's just very, very difficult to do. It's a very, very tough car to drive the Mamba. Certainly difficult to drive consistently as well on anything other than sort of flat roads. It really, really does not like the bumps of city circuits. But a 112.3 is a respectable lap time. Just ahead of it though is the JB700, a very, still a very decent vehicle, you know, it, it can get a decent lap time out of it, it's, you know, acceleration, top speed and it's, it's cornering, all aren't too bad. What must be remembered about the Sports Classics class is that the vast majority of these cars don't get the benefit of a spoiler, so unlike the Sports class or even the Muscles class and the Supers class obviously, the, most of the cars in those classes get the benefit of adding a spoiler in Los Santos Customs which like I said earlier in improves their lap times. But most of the sports classics don't, they, they don't get the benefit of those modifications and the lap times that they get keeping that in mind, the fact that spo I mean, spoilers decrease lap times by a good few seconds, the, the lap times that they get 
keeping that in mind, are actually still pretty impressive. The Coquette Classic here in 6th place with a 111.4 just misses out on the top 5 to the Monroe that also gets a 1 minute 11 this time a 0.1 so very very close between them and yeah both the Monroe and the Coquette Classic they're very competent vehicles if they had spoilers they would be even better obviously the Monroe does suffer in terms of braking but it does have a decently high top speed obviously we'll see the top speed video for all of these cars tomorrow but yeah, they are, they are relatively decent vehicles that get decent lap times. Now coming into the top four, we've got the Casco, which does take a little bit of time off what we saw from the Monroe with a 1 minute 10.3. So almost a second taken off there in terms of lap time. But as we'll see from the top speed testing video tomorrow, the Monroe would have a better, a better chance in, if, on anything that has longer straights and requires a bit more top speed. But that lap time that it does get is still relatively impressive considering that it doesn't you know, get the spoiler like I mentioned earlier. And it does actually lose out in third place to the Pigali, which is one of the very few cars that does get the benefit of a spoiler in this class. The rear louvers on the back, those black bars that go across the back window there, those do act as a spoiler, those increase traction in Los Santos Customs, decrease the lap times that you can get because they give you higher cornering speeds. And when it first came out, the Pigali was one of the better cars to choose. It was probably the best car in the class in terms of cornering speeds because it was just very, very quick around those corners because of that spoiler upgrade that pretty much all other vehicles in this class don't get the benefit of. So when it comes to cornering ability, the Pigali was always very, very good. But ultimately, it is only in third place with a 110.1, and our second place vehicle does take almost a second off that lap time. It is, of course, the Z-Type. The Z-Type gets a lap time of 1 minute 9.3, so like I said, almost a second taken off it. And if you can extract the most out of the Z-Type, it will be a very, very competent vehicle. It will give you a very good lap time. And as we'll see from the top speed testing video tomorrow, it is very good in that respect as well. And our first placed vehicle certainly isn't very good in terms of top speed. So there is at least some level of balance there when it comes to the track makeup and what kind of track that you're on, whether it's all to do with top speed or not. But ultimately the Z-Type is in second place. It's kind of on its own a little bit, you know, being almost a second quicker than third place, but it is completely dominated by our number one vehicle for the class pretty much the only one you need for these races it is of course the sterling gt with a lap time of 1 minute 6.166 this is over three seconds per lap quicker than anything else and it is completely dominant and the reason for that is all to do with the spoiler now you might be wondering where's the spoiler on the sterling gt if you haven't known, known any about this before that rear tire on the back of the sterling gt acts like a spoiler it's one of the very few cars again in this class that gets a spoiler and frankly it doesn't need one. If it didn't have a spoiler upgrade the Sterling GT would get about a 1 minute 9 lap time and that would make a decent amount of balance to the class. I can only imagine it was a mistake that that rear tyre was put in this spoilers category but because of that it gets a massive boost to its cornering speed which it doesn't need really. It has incredible acceleration and its cornering speed is just ridiculous in comparison to everything else in, in, in the Sports Classics class. You can actually use the Sterling GT in regular sports races now as well. The lap time that it gets would put it around 23rd place I believe with sort of the Alpha, the Banshee, the Carbon is there, the Coquette, things like that. Um, so you can use it in regular sports races but that doesn't really help it. It doesn't really help the Sports Classics class any because the Sterling GT is still completely overpowered and on any track that has even a, a small amount of corners, the Sterling GT, as long as you're actually driving it properly and getting the most out of it in the corners, will be utterly dominant. As you can see here, with it being three seconds quicker than anything else, th th there's just nothing else that you need on any normal regular circuit. Having said that, you know, as we'll see from the top speed testing video tomorrow, it isn't the full story. You're not going to be able to use the Sterling GT in every single situation because it does have a significant weakness, that weakness being top speed. So we'll see what that is in the top speed testing video tomorrow. But yeah, it's all because of that spoiler on the back of it. Very few cars in the class get a spoiler. The Pigali gets one and that puts it right at the top of the class. But the Sterling GT gets a spoiler, increases its traction and that absolutely makes it completely 100% dominant rather than just giving it a little boost to make it competitive. And it's a real shame as well because the Sports Classics class was always very re relatively well balanced anyway. The Z-Type was 
mostly dominant on the majority of tracks but not by much at least there were some other vehicles as we saw even from 10th place up to second place there wasn't that much of a spread and you could say that from 10th place to second place we had the same spread of lap time from second place to first place so there were at least other vehicles that you could use in the sports classics class but as soon as the sterling gt was released and and we realized how dominant it was we pretty much haven't done sports classics races since because it's just it's boring to have classes that are all just one vehicle you know it's having some variety with them is what it's all about so yeah it is a shame in that respect but ultimately it is what it is and all i can do is uh, tell you the results so that is pretty much it obviously remember to read the description for more info comment with your thoughts like the video if you enjoyed or found it helpful and obviously subscribe for more as we're going through all the classes thank you all so much for watching i really really do appreciate it and i'll see you next time